Roman and Carthaginian Spain, the black presence. Concerning the gods, I have no means of knowing whether they exist or not, nor what form they are, for there are many obstacles to such knowledge, including the obscurity of the subject and the shortness of human life. Pythagoras of 5th century Sophus. The integral part of any obscurity of my subject is this, the determination of who was black. Unfortunately for us, the ancient writers and modern historians and commentators do not adhere or subscribe to American doctrine that one drops make you whole. Only those whom the Greek and the Latin authors call Ethiopians are definitely black, and of course the term Ethiopian has little to do with the modern geographical entity. For some scholarly perspective, the determination of the black presence in Spain must be archaeologically and literally remains. The literal reference for the most part dealt with wars. It seems best Therefore, to assess the topic primarily on a basis of warfare. It is necessary to keep in mind that my sources of information are writers in Greek and Latin and modern commentators and historians. The Carginians, other North Africans, native Spanish tribes, left no literary records. Carthage corresponds with the modern day Tunis and was part of ancient Libya, that is, the part of North Africa from Egypt west to the ocean. Carthage began as one of the western colonies of Thai in the Phoenicians in Labyrinth Metanon. Traditional date of her founding is 814 BC. Other Phoenician colonies were Utica in North Africa and Galdes or Roman Galdes or modern Aedes in Spain, which stands today. Traditional date for their foundation is considerably early. There were also early Phoenician settlements elsewhere in North Africa and on Sicily, Malta, and Sardinia. The Phoenician settlements for the purpose of trade, and these settlements were probably established as a way of stations. The prime object of the trade with Spain was silver, gold, iron, tin, and lead. The ties between Carthage and Tyre were weakened in 6th century BC when Tyre was defeated by the Babylonians. Carthage appeared to be an independent entity until the 5th century when the Carthaginians had seen them making treaties with the Eucratians against the Greek colonies in the west and fighting with the Sardinian Greeks for control of the permanence of half of Italy. Also during the 5th century, Carthage extended her control of the Mediterranean coast of North Africa from Sarnia to the ocean. By now, she also exuded some influence in southern Spain. The gift of coaches was offered as this is for determining the black peoples in Spain can be seen by this time. The ruling class had Carthage seemed to have kept the Phoenicians relatively unmixed and unsurrounded populations. The Phoenicians were Semitic people akin to Hebrews. The populations around the characters are generally called Libyan by ancient authors and Berbers by modern, neither can exact a racial denomination. Oric Bays in an ancient language Libyan is somewhat useful in deciphering the terminology. He defines a Berber as a word of having a gospelological meaning, the modern language of the Libyan race in all dialects, using ethnic sense to bring modern Libyan. Not all barber speaking people, which includes some Negroids, etc., but those directly for descended from ancient Libyans. Libyans is defined as a people belonging to the indigenous population of Libya as a whole, generally uses a reference of to the ancient population and not synonymous with the Hematic, which has a wider meaning. Hematic is defined as pertaining to the Hamitic race. This race comprises of Barbers or Western Hamites and the Ethiopians or Eastern Hamites. Though Barber wants to see, you see a prototypical modern mar- Barber as white at birth, even by Ethiopian standards. Almost all the modern branches of the Hamitic race, which are named, which are he calls the Negro stock, Negro elements, or Negro stockoid. Other modern historians who call the ancient Libyans barbers and do not actually call them white, call them non-Negro or non-Negro. The meaning of non-Negro may be anything. In this digression, it's relevant because the Cardinian army contained a core of Cardinians and Cardinian generals but the majority which made up a subject of Libyans and Libyans, Numidians and Iberian mercenaries. The Roman writers distinguished between Carthage and called it Punica, Libyans and Libyan Phoenicians, a mixture of Carthaginian or Libyans. Africans, as Libby called them, although some modern understand them by the term Libyan Phoenicians, Western Phoenicians, Phoenicians in Libya, Further, the first edition of the Oxford Classical Dictionary calls the majority of the inhabitants of the later Roman province of Africa, that is, formerly Carthaginian territory, man of barber stock, whose language still survives today. Their tribal chief divisions were Germanomites, Masi, Masalina, Moors, and Galatine. 
the Masi and the Masalina are Numibians. At least all these people would have been considered black today in the United States. More complete survey of the description of the Milibians by moderns will prove mostly that the words have no meaning. Let us hear suffice that a pure Carthaginian, if one existed, would be considered white. The population around in Carthage would be mixed at best with people becoming darker, the further south towards the desert they live. The Carthaginians ultimately lost Sicily in the First Pinnacle War with Romans 264-241 B.C. The defeated General Hannibal Abarkar, the father of Hannibal the Great, set about restoring conscious fortunes on, by the conquest of Spain. When he died after nine years, his place was taken by his son-in-law, Hashtabal. Hashtabal founded Cagina, or Cagina Nova, in 228, but was assassinated in 221 B.C. He was succeeded by Hannibal, who managed to control most of Spain before he attacked Santingo on the town, and provoked the Romans into another war. We must suppose that the Carthaginians at this point have followed their former practices of using mercenaries. Livius and Pabibus both explicitly state, however, that the preparation for this attack on Rome, Hannibal has sent Spaniards into Africa and Africans into Spain for the defense of both while he was away. Pabibus claims to have seen a bronze tablet commissioned by Hannibal himself on which these numbers, left in Spain with Hasdrubal's Hannibal brother were Calvary, 450 liberal Phoenicians and Libyans, 300 Argies, a Spanish tribe, 1,800 Numibians and Marcerias, Mori or Moors, and infantry, 11,850. So, mm -mm. the Libyans, Ligurians, um, 300 Ligurians and 500 Balearians, both Spanish tribe, and from the latter day Amosia and the nearby islands. In addition, Hannibal took with him an infantry to Italy, a 90,000 infantry, 12,000 cavalry, and 21 elephants, and their drivers of certainty. This would have come to Spain, and through have reflected the same ethnic principles for separation, although his iron could include newly conquered Spanish tribesmen. It is well known that the Carthaginians and Hannibal lost the Second Punic War, and along with it, they lost Spain. The Second Punic War lasted between 218 to 201. The Carthaginians were general for Spain in 206, and 205, the eastern and western coasts of Spain were organized into Roman provinces, near and farther Spain, Hispaniola Cartilla, Hispaniola Anturia. The struggle with the Spanish in the area and the beyond confusion until 133 BC when the Monteria fell to a Roman blockade and siege. Under Augustus, the Spanish had reorganized three provinces. Vegeta, which included the old father Spain, Tanianis, which included the north and northwest expansion of their Spain, and the newer province of Lubuena. It corresponded with some degree to a modern Portugal. Spain was therefore one of the earliest non Italian departments of Rome, and to a large degree, its affairs were settled before the Romans came conscious of imperialistic. The Romans, in particular, Julius Caesar, and the heir, his heir, Octavian Augustus, established colonies for Roman citizens and retired Roman soldiers and participated for those who become Roman citizens if they moved to Rome. Vespasian gave Latin rights to all the native Spanish communities in AD 73. This entitled the Legislative Magistrate to Rome and Roman, Roman citizenship and its inhabitants voted prisoners if they went to Rome. At this point, it was usually considered the makeup of the Roman army. The basic unit of the army was a legion. This was formed with Roman citizens. The auxiliary or the auxiliary forces were originally from dependent communities within Italy. Well, as these communities gained Roman citizenship, they became so eligible for the legions, and the auxiliary was recruited from the Pritian and the foreigners, who gained Roman citizenship for themselves, and later, wives and sons became the, complexion, uh, the completion of 25 years of service. In this way, many provinces became Roman citizens until A.D. 212, when Constantine granted citizenships to the whole empire. The Roman provinces in North Africa were along the Mediterranean coast, established as follows. Africa was established in the most fertile part of Carthage's territory, and after Carthage was destroyed by the Romans in 146 B.C. in the Third Punic War, Namibia was added to the province of Africa in 46 BC by Julius Caesar. And since it has been ported his defeat by his rival Pompey, Numidia was given to Jubio II in 30 BC, but later it was restored as part of the province of Africa. 
Sedgman's service, who ruled from A.D. 193 to 211, made Namibia a separate province once again. Egypt became a personal province of Augusta, and later empires of the defeat of Anthony and Cleopatra by Augusta, then Octavian at Ottoman 3 and 31 BC. Both provinces of Montana, modern day Algiers and Morocco, were established by Emperor Claudius before AD 44. Montania and Caesar and Montania and Tina, and much later Docian, who ruled from 284 to 316, redivided the provinces of Martina Tanga and became part of Spain. In all cases except for Egypt, all provinces settled within the Roman and Italians, within Italian traders and craftsmen and other workers. I reviewed the information from this point to make perhaps it obvious that the Spanish who were subjugated, pacified, and Romanized before all others in the Roman Empire and more likely have been in various parts of North Africa in great number, especially in the Roman army. The North Africans were and had been in Spain. By this time, the North Africans were in the Roman auxiliary in their own units. Spain had enough little, had little to use for foreign peacekeeping army. The one notable exception is the siege of Namibia, as is previously mentioned. Jacob, the grandson of Mycenae, a Namibian king who was aided by the Romans in Africa at the end of the Second Punic War, had the had come to the aid of an ally and the client king of Rome. Drotha was sent a Numidian contingent in the aid of Romans in Spain. Later his overconfidence, he provoked the Romans into war, and the Justinian War of 109 to 104 BC, which he lost. Rule was afterwards given to another son, grandson of Messina. The African troops, even clearly black African troops, can be seen in the Roman army and other parts of the empire, as well as monuments set up by the empress for show. Without a question, black people's inner Spain the capacity other than the military, given the proximity. It can be shown that under empire there were certain Im imports from Spain to Africa and imported from Africa to Spain. It is these records of wars, however, that is the clearest and least controversial evidence lies. So there we have it. So there we have it. You know what I'm saying? Um, black emperor doing his thing, making things happen and stuff like that. Um, subscribe to the channel when we talk about black history, you know, um, shows that clearly they had a black thing going on over there in that part of Europe, in Africa. Hey, peace.